Welcome to Daily Conversation. This is Mr. K. This is Eric. Yeah, today is the 4th of December 2021, and the time now is 6.16 a.m. Well, today is a reading session, and we are going to continue reading the book Eat to Beat Disease. And before we get started, please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, so here we go. Chapter 5. Immunity. Everyone knows a strong immunity. A strong immune system helps you avoid the common cold. But did you know that immunity is so powerful, it can protect you against cancer? And if you do have cancer, your immune system is capable of eliminating it completely from your body, even if it has spread. Genetics, smoking, the environment, a bad diet, and other factors are often blamed for cancer. But the truth is that regardless of its cause, cancer only becomes a disease once malignant cells escape from being destroyed by our immune system. Indeed, our immune system is one of the best known health defense systems. It keeps us from becoming infected after we have a cut, fights viruses, and prevents us from getting sick from harmful microbes cuffed into the air by a fetal passenger on the bus. The true power of immunity is being revealed as researchers study how to boost our own immunity to fight cancer. Cancer patients are beginning to survive against overwhelming odds with all signs of their disease melted away using immune boosting treatments. As I mentioned in chapter one, from microscopic tumors all the time in our body, they are invisible to never, those will never become problems. One reason is that cancer cells need a blood supply to grow large enough to cause harm. Properly functioning angiogenesis defense system will keep that from happening. But the immune system actually provides the first line of defense. Our immune cells are specifically designed to differentiate friends from foes, including cancer cells. When the earliest signs of cancerous growth are spotted by first responder immune cells, they call it they call they call in a cellular strike. Special cancer killer immune cells soup soup in and wipe out the normal cells before they cause problems. Sometimes Cancer cells dodge our immune system by camouflaging themselves. They do this by wrapping themselves in friendly proteins that fool immune cells into recognizing them as normal cells. This effectively makes cancer cells invisible so they escape detection. By hiding like deadly terrorist blending in with a bustling, bustling cloud of ordinary citizens. These clocked cancer cells have a chance to grow and become dangerous. Other times, the immune system is weakened 
and unable to do its job adequately. So cancer cells are missed and are able to grow. People who suffer from, in, from immunodeficiency diseases like AIDS, or those who have received an organ transplant and have to take lifelong immune suppressing steroids to prevent organ rejections are at really high risk of, for developing cancer because their immune defenses are compromised. New immunotherapy. Can cancer treatments help your immune system do its job to eliminate dangerous cancer cells. This approach is remarkable because it doesn't rely on toxic or targeted drugs to kill cancer cells. Rather, it encourages our own body to rid itself of the cancer. James Allison of MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas and Tasaku Honjo of Kyoto were awarded the 2018 Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology for their pioneering work that discovered how to harness our immune system to fight cancer. One type of immunotherapy blocks the clocking proteins that cancers use to hide from the immune system, effectively revealing them. For checkpoint inhibitors, these treatments allow patients on immune defenses to wake up and see the cancer. They can then destroy it. At the age of 90, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter was diagnosed with a deadly cancer called malignant mel melanoma. It had spread to his liver and his brain, a situation with a dismal prognosis and usually unsurvivable. Along with some pinpoint radiation to the tumor, Carter received a checkpoint inhibitor called Keytruda pembrolizumab, which helped his immune system find the tumors. The treatments soon worked. The tumor is in his brain disappeared without the need for chemotherapy. My own mother, a musician and professor of piano, was 82 when she was diagnosed with endometrial cancer. This cancer develops within the lining of the uterus. Although her cancer was removed by surgery, it came back aggressively and in multiple locations in her body a year later. We perform a genomic analysis on her tumor and discovered the presence of a tumor maker, a tumor marker called MSI-H, microsatellite instability high. This means that she would likely benefit from Keytruda, like Carter with immuno immunotherapy and a tiny dose of radiation. Her immune defenses system completely wipe out all trace of cancer. There are other immunotherapy approaches. They are game changers for patients with cancer and their oncologists like. It's possible to, to collect a person on immune cells through a process called aphorosis, which is similar to blood donations. As blood is collected, the T cells are removed and the rest of the blood is returned back to patients. The T cells are then sent to a special central where they are genetically engineered to become CRCAR T cells. This procedure reprograms T cells and directs them to target cancers like an immune 
homing vessel. CAR T cell therapy is effective for treating lymphoma and leukemia. A close friend was diagnosed with an aggressive cancer called diffuse V cell lymphoma. Despite standard treatments, the cancer continued to grow and spread. To receive an infusion of CAR T cells made from her own immune cells. After a few weeks, her body showed signs of responding to her soup up in new cells. And in less than two months, all signs of her cancer were eliminated by her immune system. While not all patients who are treated with immunotherapies have their cancer wiped out, those that do have continued to be cancer free for years. Uh, specific foods and the components within them can powerfully in influence our immune defenses too. Scientists from the University of Rome in Italy discovered that al allergic, allergic acid, a bioactive that is found at high levels in chestnuts, blackberries, walnuts, pomegranates, and strawberries blocks production of the same immune clocking protein targeted by checkpoint inhibitor drugs like Keytruda in bladder cancer. We will talk more about this research in Chapter 10. Clearly, the immune system is one of the pillars of our defense. This is designed to protect the body from, inva from invasions by viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Through an ingenious system of patterns recognition, immune cells identify and destroy threats. While recognizing healthy cells and leaving them alone, under normal circumstances in healthy people, the immune system is always on standby. Like fire departments ready to act when an alarm is sounded, your body, your body automatically knows whether to, turn on, uh, whether to turn up or turn down its immune response. Neither inactive nor overactive, it operates from a point where all forces are points and balance, but in a constant state of alert. There are many steps you can take to safeguard your immune defenses throughout your life. Exercise, proper sleep, and lowering and managing stress all help your immune system stay healthy. So can your dietary choices. Certain foods boost your immune system and help it fight diseases of aging. And other foods can help calm the immune system when it is overly active, as seen in autoimmune diseases. Before we discuss these foods, however, I want to tell you about how improving our immunity has play a role in the ad advancement of the human species, species and how it's given us a powerful advantage over terrible diseases. Early efforts at immunity boosting. The disease known as smallpox was once one of the deadliest killers on the planet. This disease scored data back to ancient times. Evidence of smallpox was found in Egypt, Egyptian mummies 
including on the heads of steroids. Ramses V. Smallpox is an infection caused by a virus called variola. The initial infection starts when the virus in, is inhaled or touched. Within a week, the virus begins infecting cells throughout the body. Fevers, skin posture, over the entire body. An inter internal bleeding can occur. Historically, the infection was fatal 30% of the time. People who survived smallpox were left with horrible disfiguring scars and sometimes were blinded when the infection involved the eyes. In the 20th century alone, smallpox killed more than 300 million people worldwide, equivalent to the entire population of the United States. But in 1980, the World Health Organization issued a history-making declaration, declaration. Smallpox was officially eliminated and no longer a threat. This achievement was accomplished by mounting a global vaccination program against smallpox that trained the immune systems of people around the world to recognize and destroy the virus before it could cause disease. The 20th century was not the first time someone had the idea of priming the body's defenses against smallpox. During the reign of M Imperial Kangxi, <coughs> 1661 and 1722, 1661 to 1722, who ruled China's final dynasty, the Qing, the Qing Empire, led outbreaks of smallpox decimated society. So Kangxi decided to protect his family members and his armies living in the forbidden cities from the deadly epidemic. He ordered imperial doctors to take scalp to, to take scalp from the dried pox of subjects dying from smallpox. Green the scab, green the scab into powder and place the powder into the noses of his family and soldiers. When exposed to the pox scab, the immune system began to mount a defense against the smallpox virus, giving the recipients an immunity to the disease. This crude technique was known as Variolations recall that the smallpox virus is called variola, and it later led to what is today known as nations. The English family doctors and surgeons Edward Jenner is credited with developing the first vaccines against smallpox in 1796, and he is regarded as a father of immunology. Yeah, um, one, two, three. The third line, and then the fourth words from the from behind. Uh, this one should be empire, and you pronounce as, uh, sorry, it's empire, and you pronounce as uh, I I forgot, maybe it's uh, empire or, or what? Okay, uh, empire. Yeah. 
Over the next 200 years, medical researchers successfully developed vaccines against diseases like polio, pol polio, tetanus, rabies, chickenpox, mumps, cholera, diphtheria, and hepatitis to protect the public against one's deadly threats. In each instance, the system is guided to unleash its defensive might against foreign invaders in the body so that health is protected and disease thwarted. In 2006, the vaccines <clears throat> Gardasil was successfully developed to protect women against developing cervical cancer following infections by human pellilovirus HPV. In 2010, the first vaccines to treat cancers prevent super Lucille T became FDA approved for prostate cancer. The same year, the cancer immunotherapy, the checkpoint inhibitors, UVO, Epilimumab, was approved to treat melanoma. This set the state for other breakthrough immune stimulating cancer drugs like. Ketruda, which benefits my mother and Jimmy Carto. Yeah, the second line, the fourth words. Uh, this one should, uh, the stress should be on the first syllable, which is cervical, and you pronounce as cervical. Cervical. And although it's still early days, it is even possible now to develop a personalized cancer vaccine in which the DNA from a tumor is analyzed for its unique mutations and a special protein is made to be injected under the skin of a patient with cancer. The injected pro proteins train the immune system to search out and destroy the cancer. So, as part of treatment, cancer patients can be vaccinated against their own cancer. Despite all this progress across history, believe it or not, most of our current understanding of the immune system has come about only the past 50 years. So, now let's take a look at how our immune system actually works. Starting with where is an anatomically located in our body. Yeah, the last line, which is the the word in the middle. Yeah, this one is. Uh, yeah, according to the uh, phonetic symbol, is like anatomic, anatomically. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Anatomically, yep. Anatomy of immune defense. The power of your immune system lies in its military like capability capabilities similar to the military mi military your immune system has dif has different branches each branch has different types of soldiers with their own specialized training weapons and skills for defending their homeland the central 
command of the immunity is located in four body sites. Your bone marrow, your bone marrow, your thymus gland, your spleen and lymph nodes, and your gut. Bone marrow is a spongy material in a hollow area of your bones. And as you may recall from chapter two, bone marrow also plays off your stem cells. Your bone marrow produces almost all the new cells in your body using stem cells called hematopoietic stem cells. Your thymus gland is an organ located behind your breastbone. It is home to special immune cells called T cells. This gland is where young T cells originally form in the bone marrow go to mature. The organ is really only active from the time you are born through puberty. It is in this, it is in this early part of your life that the T cells of your immune system are created and stockpile. As you get older, the organ atrophies and becomes replaced with fat cells. Your spleen is the first site, <coughs> spongy sac located behind your stomach on your left side. It stores and filters blood. As part of the immune system, the spleen acts like a giant lymph node, where special cells called B cells produce antibiotics that recognize bacteria and viruses that invade the body. The people have had their spleen sur <coughs> surgically removed because the organ was ruptured by trauma or abnormally enlarged by disease. They can be more vulnerable to infections and less able to respond to the effect of the vaccines as they are unable to make as many antibiotics without their spleen. Yeah, I think you uh, overlooked the words, uh, which is the last line. The first word, this is antibodies and uh, maybe you overlook it as antibiotics, right? Mm, yeah. Antibody. The, the location of the fourth headquarters for immunity, the gut, is critical for understanding the link between diet and immunity. The gut is also home to the microbiome, which, as you saw in chapter three, can inf influence the immune system. The importance of the gut for immune defense had been recognized only recently for its profound role in maintaining health. In fact, the immune function of the gut was largely overlooked when I was in medical school. As students, we were taught in histology class, there were small patches in the intestines called pier, called uh, payers patches associated with immune function. We could barely find them under the microscope when we examined slides of the intestines. And our lecturers also told us that the appendix probably has some function, but what that, but that it was vestigial, vestigial, uh, vestigial or unnecessary. That was the state of knowledge then and an un underestimation.
We now know the entire gut is an immune organ. The surface area spanning the size of two parking spots, 32 square meters. In addition to follow five immune cells that coordinate immune defense, the gut's command cell, uh, centers allowed healthy bacteria living there to give signals to immune cells elsewhere in the body. Other immune command stations are located in your tonsils, lymph lymphatic vessels, and lymph nodes. Yeah, the, the second line from the bottom, the last word, uh, yeah, this one should be lim lymphatic and you pronounce as lymphatic. Yeah, so it should be fat. Uh, I pronounce fur. Oh, yeah, so I'm sorry. Uh, but but, but, uh, but why is uh, uh, the correct pronunciation? Lim lymphatic, lymphatic, yeah. lim uh, lymphatic. Lymphatic, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I uh. No, no. I heard uh, the, the uh, person, uh, the P sound. Uh, I pronounced wrong, uh, wrongly. Issue the lymphatic, so it's not lymphatic. I pronounced oh. lymphatic. Okay. Lymphatic. Soldiers of immunity. As with the other health defense systems I have shown you, the immune system is made up of a number of players that each have a function for protecting your body. I'm going to tell you about the major cells and function, so you will be able to appreciate and better understand the research I present about food and immunity in part two. The cells of the immune system are known as white blood cells or leukocytes. The Greek word for white is leuco. There are five types of leukocytes, each with different job descriptions. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophytes. And I've listed them here in order to, from most to least numerous based on how pre prevalent they are in your blood. Medical students memorize them by the by the pneumatic never let monkeys eat bananas. Lymph lymphocytes are actually a group of several types of immune cells. The three main types of lymphocytes are T cells, B cells, and natural killer NK cells. T cells have three sub subtypes, helper Ts, cytotoxic, T's and suppressor T cells. Other immune cells include macrophages, mast cells, and dendritic cells. These are the immune players that defend your health. Of these cells originate <clears throat> from stem cells in your bones marrow called hematopoietic stem cells. This is why drugs like chemotherapy, which damages bone marrow cells as well as circulating white blood cells, lower your immunity. On the flip side, diet can influence the production of immune cells in the bone marrow. Scientists from the University of Southern California show that passing Cycles can be used to build a fresh immune system. Remarkably, they show that fasting two to four days in a row 
forces the human bodies to go into the recycling mode, which gets rid of the older, worn out immune cells. And when food is started, start again, it jump starts the hematopoietic stem cells in your bone marrow to start generating fresh immune cells to rebuilding the immune system. A two-part immune system, fast and slow. Your immunity is actually made up of two different immune systems, each designed in its own way to protect your body from foreign invaders, whether they are bacterial, viruses, parasites, or cancer cells. One is shift acting, responding immediately to an attack on the body by an invader. It is a blunt instrument programmed to defend against any invader using the exact same weapons each time. This is the innate immune system. When you have an allergic reaction or inflammation, it is the innate system at work. 90% of all animals' species, species have only this type of immune response. The second immune system is slower acting but much more sophisticated. This system takes about a week to assemble its defenses, but when it does, it's very finely turns to knock out specific targets on invaders in the body. This is the adaptive this is this is the adaptive or acquired immune system. It works in two major ways. It can defend by using specialized cells designed for killing, or it can create any bodies that's, that swarms like on it to surround and attack the enemy. Each system is important for health. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what foods can do for each. Yep, so uh, this is where we stop today. Okay. Yeah. Some. Yep. Um, so, uh, firstly, uh, today's uh, today's reading session, uh, we read the part uh, talking about immunity. Yep. And in, immunity is also one of the defense system, and. Um, yeah, firstly, it talk about uh, cancer. Yeah, one word I uh, actually record it down, which is cancer only become a disease when malignant cells escape from being destroyed by our immunity systems. So, um, yeah, our immunity systems actually is uh, constantly or continually uh, doing the work to, uh, to control the cancer cells and then uh, uh, to destroy them if needed. Yeah, and uh, also recall back to previous uh, reading session about the, I think it's the first defense system, angiogenesis. Uh, in that chapter, we read that, uh, we know that cancer cells need a blood supply to, to grow large enough to cause harm to our body. And, uh, in today's reading session, we talk about uh, immune cells. They are actually functioning as the front liner. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are the uh, the, the cells that uh, actually uh, uh, work before the angiogenesis. Uh, firstly, they have to differentiate uh, those good cells from those uh, maybe can cancer cancer cells. So. Um, uh, there is also one uh, immune cells called cancer killing immune cells, yeah, which is uh, specifically uh, used to kill the cancer. And then, uh, um, yeah, there are some uh, me uh, there are some treatments, medical treatments, which uh, can be used to help to fight with cancer. 
and yeah, actually I was happy to to see this. And uh, one of it is the uh, I think is a scientist win uh, uh, get the Nobel Prize in 2018. Yeah, which is quite recent. Uh, discover how to harness our immune system to fight cancer. Yeah, and then uh, we have something called immunotherapy. Uh, it can effectively reveal cancer cells. Yeah, they are they are uh, they are trying to find it out. They are discovered. Uh, dis they they discovered them uh, be because these kind of cancer cells uh, they can hide inside some healthy pro protein. So uh, uh, this immunotherapy actually is doing the work to identify the cancer cells, and once they can identify them, uh, I mean that once the cell, uh, the immune cells can identify the cancer cells, uh, the the immunity can uh, produce more cancer killing cells to to kill them. Yeah, and then uh, uh, also one uh, some other therapy regarding to. Uh, the immune system, which is the immune therapy uh, that actually train the T cells. Yeah, uh, we we've got T cells in our body, and uh, but the T cells is not uh, is not really that powerful enough to uh, to deal with uh, those uh, cancer which already spread uh, already spread in our body, and then uh, 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 this immune therapy they actually. Uh, kind of like suck out our blood and then uh, extract the T cells from our blood, and then they actually kind of uh, doing some process to train the T cells so that T cells uh, become uh, the CAR T cells. Yeah, and then uh, the CAR T cells are then injected back to our body, and uh, it can help to fight with cancer. Yeah, and then uh, next it also talk about vaccination, and then I talk about one of the successful uh, uh, battle uh, between human and smallpox. Yeah, smallpox is one of the uh, deadly disease in the past, and then uh, until if I didn't get it wrong, it's like it's like around nineteen eighties, uh, WHO. Uh, they announced that we have uh, successfully eliminated uh, the smallpox. And then uh, how we do that is, uh, is through the way vaccination. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I hope that one day uh, the COVID-19 will also end uh, like this, which is like uh, we, a human win the battle by uh, through the way of vaccination. And then... Uh, 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 COVID nineteen no no longer become something uh, 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 deadly or uh, so powerful. And then uh, next, it talk about the anatomy of immune defense, which is like uh, where our where our immune uh, immune cells or immune defense uh, located in our body. Uh, so basically, there are four, which is the first one is thymus gland. Yeah, this is uh, basically behind our breast bone, and then uh, its function is uh, producing T cells. And the next one is spleen. Yeah, spleen is, is actually uh, an organ. And for this one, actually, I have heard about one of my friends uh, also do some surgery to remove the spleen. And at that time, I don't understand what is the purpose of spleen. And now I understand it actually produced B cells. Yeah, B cells is also one of the cells uh, uh, related to immune uh, to our immune system. And the next one, the third one is our gut. Yeah, our gut. And uh, for here also, it, it talked back a, a little about the bacterial, those good bacteria, and talk about uh, uh, the good bacteria is, is actually uh, live or, or being stored in our gut and also talk about the purpose of appendix. Yeah, for this one also I did a quick research, found that, yeah, it is true, appendix is not something uh, useless and uh, it is something actually, uh, it is a part of our gut and also a part of 
uh, a place to store our good bacteria. So I think um, for this part, I, I didn't, uh, I, I don't really, I, I don't fully understand whether gut uh, uh, itself is an immune defense or it means that gut will have many good bacteria and this attributable to uh, our immune defense. Yeah, and the last one, the fourth one is bone marrow. The bone marrow uh, uh, also, uh, this one will uh, also relate back to the stem cells. Yeah, uh, um, stem cells can produce the, uh, the immune cells, so they are related. And it says that uh, actually almost all of our immune cells comes from bone marrow. Yeah, so this is important. And lastly, I also came across uh, fasting. Yeah, this one also uh, mentioned by you in previous uh, conversation. Yeah, today it comes out. Uh, fasting can help our body like uh, regenerating and replacing the uh, re regenerating new immune cells and replacing the old uh, immune cells. Yeah, so I think these are my sharing today. <coughs> yeah, and uh, uh, the immune cells have two types. The first is <coughs> the first is uh is uh when the immune cells see the enemy and then it go attack. Yeah, just just attack as quickly as possible. And then mm. the second part of the immune cells is. <clears throat> they will observe it and they will see how the viruses, how the bacteria behave, and then he'll design a plant, he'll design a, a structure, and then and then uh, up, after <clears throat> up, after they finally design the plants and then he will he will he will go to attack the the viruses or the bacteria. Yeah, mm. and both of them are important. Mm. Yeah, so the first type which uh which the immune cell like when they see uh enemies and then he goes to attack it is like the first filter. And when mm. when the first type of immune cell cannot successfully take down the the, the viruses of bacteria and then uh the the second type of immune cell play the major role mm. in agents. Yeah. <clears throat> and Another thing about the fasting and uh, based on my research, uh, the fasting is also uh, kind of like uh, allow the new cells and uh, uh, allow the active cell, allow the active cell and the strong and the stronger cells eat and also uh, uh, replace it or it in and it and replace the uh the weak the, the weaker cells and also the inactive cells. Yeah mm. so uh, and also some some of the cells are damaged. So the the cells that still function well, still good and didn't uh, DNA uh, didn't mutate and then it function well it will eat those uh damaged cells or, or weaker cells. And then mm. make it become stronger, and then it can, and then the active cell can can replicate itself, can reproduce, and so we uh, we don't need to worry about uh, our our cell being eaten, and then it will cause a problem. No, because cell will keep reproduce themselves. So it kind of like remove, remove and replace all the all the damaged cells, all the inactive cells, uh, by replacing. Uh, uh, a replace, replace, replace to the new cells, or replace to the to the stronger cells. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's all for my uh summary. Yeah, and uh, just now you say uh, the cells, the immune cells can uh be broken into two types, right? And uh, one is like the uh, acting faster to uh, to to kill to attack those uh, viruses at the first time uh, at uh, at the first instance, 
and the other type is the slower one. Um, yeah, for this one, I, I'm thinking because uh, normally when we, let's say we uh, get sick and then uh, maybe after one or two days, we found that, oh, uh, we, uh, we didn't get better. And then maybe we go to the doctor and then uh, maybe we take some medicine and maybe the, maybe the doctor, uh, uh, they may or may not give the antibiotics. And uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, uh, maybe this is before our immune cells, the second type of immune cells uh, uh, started to take action. Yeah, maybe, uh, I also heard people say that when you get sick, uh, try not to get, try not to go to the doctor first and then maybe let your body uh, to, uh, to deal with it and then maybe That's take fine. some time. Yeah. Uh, find a way to deal with the bacteria, deal with the viruses, mm. and yeah. after that, your immune your immune system will, will become stronger because mm. you recognize the, uh, the 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 new enemies. Yeah. yeah. So next time he won't uh get tricked, he won't get uh he won't get caught by the new viruses or new bacteria. Mm. If you go see a doctor and you take the antibiotic, and it actually kill uh, everything. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it actually uh, kill, uh, not only kill the the viruses, the bacteria, it also kill your immune cells, mm. your white blood cells, and when next time, when next time the the same enemy or the immune immune uh, uh, maybe the maybe the viruses or the bacteria inside your body still, uh, still haven't fully been wiped out. And mm. it mutates, and then yeah. it will cause a yeah, greater problem because now the viruses become stronger, mm. and your immune self, uh, your immune self don't even have the, the have the plan to deal with the first version of the virus. Now mm. the virus is version two, yeah, yeah uh, become stronger. Mm. Yeah, so maybe no choice. You have to go back to the doctor and then take a stronger. Antibiotics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Until you fully uh, wipe all the virus, uh, all the deadly viruses and the bacteria. Mm. And but now your immune cells still, still, still didn't recognize the new enemy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, yeah, and also one more thing, which is. Uh, sometimes we feel. Uh, sometimes we feel the symptoms. We feel the symptoms. Uh, yeah, we feel the symptoms that we we are getting sick. Mm. We, uh, we get some begin to get sick. sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, for example, fever. For example, mm. flu. Yeah. And all this is actually your immune cells start to react to against the 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 enemies. So mm. the feel is kind of like. He increased the temperature of your body and try to try to try to kill try to kill the viruses and bacteria. Mm. Yeah. And you treat the fever, you treat the flu uh, as a disease. Mm. As a yeah. uh, as a uh, as a symptom of disease, and then you go see doctor and doctor yeah, uh, a doctor uh, uh, try to uh, try to kill uh, try to cure you. Mm. And then yeah. after after you go back, you take the you take the pills, you take the drugs, and then and then after some time you find oh my fever gone, my flu gone, yeah. yeah. But your fever gone, your flu gone. Uh, they may have two reasons. The first is, uh, your immune cell failed to do their job, mm. and that the second the second is. Yeah, you successfully kill all the all the bad things, all the enemies. So your immune cell uh, lower down your temperature, lower down te body temperature. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, it's the second one, right? Mm. Yeah. The yeah. first one isn't that good, and the medicines successfully bring down our temperature, but uh, it may not be a good thing. Mm. Yeah. Okay, any, anything you want to add? Uh, no. 
Okay, so that's all for our today's conversation. How do you feel? Did you enjoy our conversations? Please tell us what what you think of our conversations. And we are not native speakers. If you any vocal group mistake we made, please also comment to let us know because we want to learn more and improve ourselves. Remember to like and subscribe to us. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.